This video brought to you by RipTee.com. If you're ready to upgrade and try the most comfortable underwear and t-shirts that you've ever felt on your skin, make sure that you use the promo code DRONETECH to get 20% off most items. Thank you. It's thing that Joe Biden did. And then he said he never spoke to his son. Does anybody believe that one? But then he also said long before that he did speak to his son. So he lied again. After years of pushing the Russian collusion hoax and even at one point suggesting that Trump was a secret Russian agent, Brian Stelter has seamlessly moved on to new conspiracy theories and fear mongering in his mission to get a Democrat in the White House. Over the last few years, we've all heard about Joe Biden admitting and even bragging that he got a Ukrainian prosecutor fired who just happened to be investigating the company that his son is a board member of. Most of you probably know about this already, but let me break it down real quick for those who may not. One, Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, was on the board of a Ukrainian-owned company that was being investigated for corruption. Two, in 2015, Joe Biden threatened to withhold a billion dollars from Ukraine unless the prosecutor was fired and even publicly bragged about doing this. You're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch, <laughs> got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid. Finally, the investigation was stopped and Ukraine got their billion dollars. Fast forward to last week and suddenly the media is losing its mind once again, this time over a whistleblower who claimed that during a phone call with the Ukrainian prime minister, Trump offered special favors in return for restarting the investigation into that company. We have no proof of this and in fact Ukraine has responded and said that no such deals were offered. So what we have here is what we've become accustomed to seeing from our Democrat party media. They circle the wagons around their own and refocus all their negative attention attention on their political opposition. Little Brian Stelter is doing his part by spinning completely normal political battles into something nefarious or outside of the norm. Confusion is in the air right now. This time, it's not because of Russian hackers. It's not a bot army waging information warfare on Facebook. This time, the person leading a disinformation campaign is President Trump. Russian hackers? I mean, what did Russian hackers really do? They exposed corruption in the DNC, which the media quickly reburied and then refocused that negative attention on Trump and the Republicans. It's a tactic that they've been increasingly reliant on in their mission to get a Democrat elected in 2020. He is confusing the public and telling people that his political opponents are dirty. Wait, what? And telling people that his political opponents are dirty. Isn't that exactly what politicians have been doing to each other since the beginning of politics? It's just about the only thing that CNN does to the GOP and Trump on a daily basis. Again, Biden already admitted that he pressured Ukraine to get rid of the prosecutor. The very thing that we're all supposed to ignore and instead be outraged that Trump may have done the same thing. Going on a Twitter storm all weekend long, smashing the media and Democrats while smearing this whistleblower that we still don't know much about. Notice who Stelter frames as the victims here, the media and Democrats. You don't say. Yes, he's attacking back at his political opponents that are attacking him. You know, one of the things that people love about Trump is that he actually fights back. The Democrats and their little butt boys like Brian Stelter would like a return to the days when Republicans would just take it and not fight back. You have to remember that the media constantly demonized George W. Bush with all the same labels that they attach to Trump now. But Bush never fought back and that's something he's apparently proud of. You may remember Billy Bush, the guy on that notorious Access Hollywood tape with Trump. His cousin George W. Bush apparently gave him the advice to quote, just take what they give you and walk away. That pretty much sums up Republicans up until Trump. Don't fight for what's right because the media might let you grovel back later. I have no doubt that Stelter and the DNC would love to return back to those days. The Trump whistleblower may not be a whistleblower at all. That's the rhetoric. That's what's happening on the right. This shows just how polluted our information environment is. Scoops do break through. Scoops have been breaking through all week long. You got that? 
The problem is the right. And the right is anybody who opposes fake journalists who are actually political operatives in a business that's been losing public trust for 20 years. This overstuffed bratwurst in a tie is simply accusing his political opposition of what he himself is guilty of, and in this very piece no less. Calling Trump a Russian agent, pushing the Russian collusion hoax for over two years, the Covington hoax, the Smollett hoax, the Russian spy story from just a few days ago. It's just a never-ending stream of political hack jobs from so-called news organizations that parrot and serve the DNC. But there's a poisonous cloud that covers our political discourse because Trump and his media wingmen will do anything to deny, deflect, and distract. Isn't that exactly what you're doing, Stelter? Biden brags about strong-arming Ukraine into firing a prosecutor who just happened to be investigating his son's company for corruption. And somehow the scandal is the president requesting an investigation into that corruption. Keep in mind that Stelter is giving this obnoxious screed after we already know that this whistleblower didn't have access to hear this phone conversation in the first place, and the Ukrainian foreign minister has defended Trump saying that no such promises were ever made. If we had any real journalists in our so-called free press, they would be all over this story. Especially since Biden publicly lied about it just the other day. Mr. Vice President, how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. And Wrong. The New Yorker disputed this claim, recounting that during an interview with Hunter Biden, he admitted discussing his company with his father, saying, quote, In December 2015, as Joe Biden prepared to return to Ukraine, his aides braced for renewed scrutiny of Hunter's relationship with the Ukrainian company. The Obama administration's special envoy for energy policy raised the matter with Biden, but did not go so far as to recommend that Hunter leave the board. As Hunter recalled, his father discussed the company with him just once, saying, quote, Dad said, I hope you know what you're doing, and I said, I do. Oh yeah, I'm sure that's the only time they ever talked about it. No doubt, if the roles were reversed, the media would be screaming about the lies and would be investigating the story for years to come if necessary. Even Stelter briefly touched on this before quickly moving on. Well, that seems very, very hard to believe. Obviously, a father's going to talk to his son about the business, but let's continue here. Here's how Biden continued to talk to the Fox reporter. Watch. Here's what I know. I know Trump deserves to be investigated. Ask the right question. <laughs> Am I living in the freaking Twilight Zone? Biden points his bony finger at a reporter and tells him to, quote, ask the right questions, which I guess means ask only promotional softball questions. And of course, the Democrat media dutifully agrees. Ask the right question. Do you think he has a point? I think he does have a point. Does it make any sense at all, especially given the last few years, that a presidential candidate can bully a reporter to ask the right questions and the media all just nod in agreement? It's yet another example of how the media and the Democrats hold Republicans to standards that they never intend on holding themselves to. It's literally just a strategy to handicap the Republicans. There's definitely a conflict of interest here, but the media believes that Biden is their best chance to beat Trump in 2020, and so they'll go to any lengths to protect him. That's all I have for you today, folks. Please smash that like button, hit subscribe, and might as well hit that bell notification while you're at it. As always, if you want to support this channel, head on over to my Teespring store and check out our merch. You can also send me a tip on PayPal, subscribe to me on Patreon, or Subscribestar. You can find all the links in the description and the pinned comment. And I just want to thank all of my generous supporters and subscribers. You all keep me going. Thanks for watching and keep coming back.